ControlNet is a powerful extension that lets you influence how your generated images look by taking reference images you provide and converting them into control maps such as pose, depth, normal maps, and even line art. This gives you a great degree of control over how your images turn out, and with so many models and preprocessors to choose from, there's a level of complexity involved. So I've decided to make this video an overview of ControlNet, and I'll do separate videos on each model and their preprocessors so you can get a good breadth of examples. But I'm starting to ramble, so like the video, thanks to the supporters, and let me give it to you bite size. So we'll start by installing ControlNet on Automatic One version 1.6, and this is done by opening your web UI and navigating to the Extensions tab. Within the Extensions tab, find and open the Install from URL tab. In the Install from URL tab, enter the following URL for the Extensions Git repository. And after entering the URL, hit the Install button to initiate the installation process. Installation speeds will be different for everybody, but eventually you'll see a message confirming the successful installation and it will read something like installed into and then the extensions location. Go to the install tab, click on check for updates and then click apply and restart UI. Use these buttons to check for future updates to ControlNet. You will also need to download some models for ControlNet to work and these can be retrieved from Hugging Face and I'll put a link in the description. Once downloaded, the models will need to be placed within the extensions model folder and you'll only need the files ending in .pth and ControlNet will automatically download any preprocessors which you don't have when trying to run them for the first time within the extension. Once all of this is done, you should have ControlNet installed and the models we downloaded showing up within the corresponding drop down list. Now that we have ControlNet installed, the next thing we'll cover in this video is some basic functions which you'll need to understand to get the most out of this tool. So let's have a look at the various options within the user interface. Our first option is the enable checkbox, which decides whether or not the extension is active or inactive. This isn't determined by whether the tab is opened or closed, like the native parts of Automatic One, and when you enable a ControlNet unit, that unit will be highlighted in green to show you that it's turned on. Single image is where you place the reference image that will be used to create the control map that determines how the new image will look. For example, if we place a picture and use preview of a control type, we'll get an altered version of our image depending on the type of model we selected. You can also place the pre-made control maps here to influence your image, removing the need to use a preprocessor, which is how you create the control maps from reference images. Also, within single image, you have tools like a masking brush, undo, eraser, and a delete button. ControlNet has multiple units, and these multiple units allow you to utilize multiple control maps and settings to influence a single generated image. This will give you even more control over your creation process. For example, I can use both canny, depth, and open pose at the same time to influence my generated image instead of using just one control type at a time. Batch lets you generate multiple images at once by specifying a folder containing the reference images as seen on my screen. So if I were to take this folder with the reference images and add it to the input directory, we can generate images for all of them based on the control type we have selected and our settings. Low VRAM optimizes the control net without compromising quality allowing you to utilize the extension even when working with limited VRAM. From my personal experience, I'd say this option is good if you have around 6GB of VRAM or more. Pixel Perfect ensures that the control maps generated from your reference images are more accurate to your reference image by allowing ControlNet to automatically set the resolution to match the reference image. With this enabled, you won't need to set a preprocessor resolution as it's done for you. The Allow Preview option lets you preview the control map's effect on a provided image, allowing you to see what will be applied before committing to a full image generation. You can also hit this orange explosion icon to preview a control map without having to enable allow preview. Control type is where you can filter the preprocessors based on the category of models selected, whereas selecting all allows all the preprocessors to be selected at once. Preprocessor is how you convert a provided reference image to a control map, which can be used to influence a newly generated image. You can also specify your preprocessor resolution if you're not using Pixel Perfect to increase or decrease the quality of the preprocessor. You only need to select a preprocessor if you're generating a control map based on a reference image. 
If you're using a pre-made control map, you won't need to use a preprocessor and you can set it to none. Model is a drop-down list containing all of the models you have installed for ControlNet and these can be filtered by selecting a control type. By selecting a model, you can generate an image using the corresponding preprocessor or the control map of your choice. You can also mix preprocessors with models, but the results may be unexpected. Control weight determines the strength and level of impact that control net will have on a generated image, meaning control net will influence an image less on a lower value and more on a higher value. You have starting control step and ending control step, and these let you control at what percentage of the total number of steps control net will be used to influence the image. For example, if you use the starting control step of 0.3, and an ending control step of 0.7, then it will use control net from 30% to 70% of the image generation sampling steps. Control mode allows you to specify whether your prompt or control net should be prioritized based on three options. Balance will do what it says on the tin and allow your images to be influenced by both control net and your prompt equally. My prompt is more important will prioritize your prompt over control net, meaning your image will be influenced more by your prompt. Control net is more important will prioritize control net when generating your image rather than your prompt. Resize mode determines how the input picture and control map is resized in relation to the resolution you specified for the image to be generated. Just resize will resize the image without cropping or filling your image, usually by stretching and pulling your image to match the desired size. Crop and resize will take the generated image and resize it by cropping it to the specified resolution. Resize and fill will resize the image by filling the remaining space to make up the desired resolution of your image. Loopback allows you to use the output image as the input for the next iteration automatically, but it still seems to be bugged and somebody has raised a bug report, so hopefully this will get fixed soon. Presets lets you save and load your control net settings making it easy to recreate your favorite configurations. This can be done by setting up your control net with the settings you like and pressing the save icon, then providing a name and saving your preset. You may need to hit the blue refresh icon for the presets to show up and you can delete presets with the bin icon. And while I won't be delving into the settings in this video, you can increase the number of control net units you have available with this slider. And I'll be covering the different models and preprocessors in upcoming videos. So hit that like button and subscribe. This is Bite Size Genius and I hope you enjoyed.